Hello, my name is Jim Bratton, and I represent National Safety Compliance. We've put together this program to provide you with some basic information about OSHA, OSHA standards, and other health and safety issues as they apply to various workplaces. In this video, I'll tell you a little of the history behind OSHA, how OSHA protects employees through what is known as standards, some of the OSHA record keeping requirements, how OSHA enforces the standards, what you can do to comply with OSHA standards, and a few other things you should know about OSHA as they relate to your company. In 1970, Congress passed the Occupational Safety and Health Act. The purpose of this legislation was to establish a nationwide federal program to protect almost the entire workforce from job-related death, injury, and illness. Before this act, job safety and health issues were mainly decided by individual companies. Without any standardized regulations or guidelines, employee health and safety was hit and miss. While some companies and industries worked to create a safe workplace, others felt it was a financial burden and was unnecessary. This was the backdrop for the creation of OSHA. But there were many events that led to the Occupational Safety and Health Act, starting with the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, to child labor, to mass immigration, to labor movements, and more. Employee health and safety has been an evolving issue. Workplace health and safety is still evolving today as new technologies, increased information, and a growing and shifting workforce create the need for new, revised, and or additional standards and guidelines. OSHA is the leading force in the protection of the U.S. workforce. After the passage of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, the first step the Secretary of Labor took was to establish within the Labor Department, effective April 28, 1971, a special agency to administer the act. This agency is what we know of today as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. This new agency took on the difficult task of creating from scratch a program that would meet the legislative intent of the Act. The purposes of the Act are quite comprehensive and include the establishment of occupational safety and health standards, carrying out inspections and investigations, ensuring the maintenance of record keeping by employers on occupational injuries and illnesses, requiring reporting by employers of work-related deaths, and conducting research relating to occupational safety and health. OSHA uses three basic strategies to help employers and employees reduce injuries, illnesses, and deaths on the job. One, OSHA uses enforcement that is strong, fair, and effective. Two, they provide outreach, education, and compliance assistance. And three, utilize partnerships, alliances, and other cooperative and voluntary programs. Since OSHA's creation in 1971, there has been substantial progress in increased occupational health and safety. Work-related fatality rates have been historically low in recent years. OSHA has helped to cut workplace fatalities by more than 60% and occupational injury and illness rates by 40%. At the same time, U.S. employment has increased from 56 million employees to more than 135 million employees. While OSHA continues to make strides in occupational health and safety, significant hazards and unsafe conditions still exist in U.S. workplaces. Each year, almost 5,200 people die from workplace injuries in the private sector. Nearly 4.3 million people suffer non-fatal workplace injuries and illnesses. And the cost of such injuries and illnesses total more than $156 billion. OSHA issues mandated laws and rules through what is known as standards. 
OSHA standards require that employers maintain conditions or adopt practices reasonably necessary and appropriate to protect workers on the job. Employers are to be familiar with and comply with standards applicable to their establishments. Employers must also ensure that employees have and use personal protective equipment when required for safety and health. Each workplace may have different requirements and different areas within one workplace may require different standards. As an employer, it is your responsibility to know what standards apply. The Occupational Safety and Health Act covers private sector employers and their employees in the 50 states and certain territories and jurisdictions under federal authority. The USH Act covers employers and employees either directly through federal OSHA or through an OSHA-approved state program. Section 18 of the OSH Act encourages states to develop and operate their own job safety and health programs. There are currently 22 states and jurisdictions operating complete state plans covering both the private sector and state and local government employees. And four, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, and the Virgin Islands, which cover public employees only. OSHA approves and monitors state plans, and states must set job safety and health standards that are at least as effective as comparable federal standards. Most states adopt standards identical to federal ones. All employers are required by law to comply with all Code of Federal Regulations CFR promulgated under the OSH Act. In addition, some agencies, both federal and state, may incorporate OSHA regulations into their own rules and regulations, whereupon these agencies then may enforce the occupational safety and health portions of their requirements. Examples of federal agencies that commonly use and enforce OSHA requirements with their own statutes and regulations are the U.S. Department of Transportation and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The OSH Act does not cover certain groups of people. These groups include the self-employed, members of immediate family of farm employers, worker conditions that are regulated under worker safety or health requirements of other federal agencies, and employees of state and local governments. Some states have state plans that cover these workers. Congress provided very specific language in the OSH Act, indicating that they recognized statistics on workplace injuries and diseases are essential to an effective national program of prevention. The Act, among other things, directed the Secretary of Labor to issue regulations to require employers to maintain records on workplace injuries and illnesses. This section is known as CFR 1904, Recording and Reporting Occupational Injuries and Illnesses. You can learn more about this standard in the workbook. The Secretary of Labor was also directed to compile accurate statistics on occupational injuries and illnesses and to make periodic reports on such occurrences. The responsibility for collecting statistics on occupational injuries and illnesses was delegated to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. OSHA is also assigned the task of enforcing the standards they implement. Enforcement is accomplished through the use of worksite inspections and, if necessary, imposing citations, penalties, or both. OSHA has a specific standard, CFR 1903, Inspections, Citations, and Proposed Penalties, that define these topics. Workplace inspections and investigations are conducted by OSHA compliance officers who are trained safety and health professionals. Inspections are almost always done without advance notice. Some special situations do occur in which OSHA might provide advance notice of their inspection. These special circumstances usually involve situations OSHA has been notified that an imminent dangerous condition is present and needs to be corrected as soon as possible or that there has been a fatality. If an employer refuses to admit an OSHA compliance officer, or if an employer attempts to interfere with the inspection, the Occupational Safety and Health Act permits appropriate legal action, such as obtaining a warrant to inspect. 
It is best to cooperate with OSHA completely when being inspected. Their goal should be your goal, the health and safety of workers. Working cooperatively will help reach that goal. Not all 111 million workplaces covered by the Act can realistically be inspected. OSHA therefore has established a priority system for conducting inspections. The worst cases are given top priority. The order in which inspections or investigations are conducted is 1. Imminent danger situations 2. Catastrophes and fatalities 3. Complaints and referrals 4. Programmed inspections, five, follow-up inspections. After an inspection, the compliance officer discusses with the employer all unsafe or unhealthful conditions observed during the inspection and indicates all apparent violations for which he or she may issue or recommend a citation and a proposed penalty. The compliance officer will not indicate any specific proposed penalties but will inform the employer of appeal rights. After the compliance officer reports their findings, the area director determines whether he or she will issue citations and or propose penalties. Citations inform the employer and employees of the regulations and standards alleged to have been violated and of the proposed length of time set to correct alleged hazards. The employer will receive citations and notices of proposed penalties by certified mail. The employer must post a copy of each citation at or near the place a violation occurred for three days or until the violation is abated, whichever is longer. Penalties are based on the type of violations found during the inspection. There are eight types of violations for which an employer can be fined and penalties can range from zero to $500,000 depending on the type and severity of the violation. Additional penalties can be imposed for violations such as falsifying records, reports, or applications, violating posting requirements, or assaulting a compliance officer, or interfering with a compliance officer while they perform their duties. So what can you do to avoid receiving citations and penalties? While striving to provide a safe and healthy workplace, you must also have established written programs that cover most OSHA standards. The most important standards all have requirements that companies have written programs in place. These standards include Hazard Communication 29 CFR 1910.1200, Respiratory Protection 1910.134, Emergency Action Plans 1910.38, Fire Prevention Plans, 1910.39, Lockout Tagout, 1910.147, and Bloodborne Pathogens, 1910.1030. Other standards may also require written programs. It is not enough to just have the programs written and then filed away. The programs must be current, utilized, reviewed, and updated as necessary to ensure their effectiveness and compliance with OSHA standards. Many companies create written programs and then fail to keep them current. OSHA would view the situation the same as if a program had not been written at all, and it indicates a lack of positive safety and health attitude overall. OSHA will usually want to see your written programs before ever starting an inspection tour of your company. You must be prepared. Another area that OSHA considers very important is that of hazard assessment and personal protective equipment. CFR 1910-132 sets standards for the use of PPE and requires companies to assess the workplace to determine hazards requiring PPE. Employers have to verify that the required hazard assessment was performed through a written certification. The certification must identify the workplace evaluated, the person certifying that the evaluation was performed, and the dates of the hazard assessment. Obviously, documentation is an essential part of avoiding OSHA citations and penalties. Training is possibly the most important issue for companies to address. OSHA imposes training and education requirements for almost all standards. It is important to note that OSHA does not specifically require documentation of training in every standard. 
Most standards do insist on documentation, and we believe that employers are better off documenting all training regardless of OSHA's requirement. Uniform documentation of all training will help you determine who needs additional training, determine when it is time to update training, and evaluate employee work performance. When reviewing your training program, you should compare your current training program to OSHA's training requirements. Employers must include OSHA required information as it pertains to that specific topic. An accurate and complete training program will benefit your company in more ways than you can imagine. We hope this short informational video on OSHA has been helpful. The workbook that accompanied this video provides additional information on over 30 different OSHA standards and other safety topics. The workbook information is not meant to be all-inclusive and is not intended as a substitute for, nor should it be construed as, legal advice. Its purpose is to introduce various topics and hopefully give you a bit of insight to those topics. The workbook also gives information on some of the products National Safety Compliance has available to help you in meeting various requirements. Thank you and have a great day.